again. So Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Now continuing our data analysis journey, it is very important to understand the programming language that we're going to use to continue our data analysis. And in this case, I'm talking about Python. For those who are well versed with Python, this might be a good refresher. But for those who are just beginning into the world of Python, then this will be a crucial step that you would have to take to gain the much needed skills required to continue on with your data analysis journey. Now for this course, I'll be using a platform called Google Collab. So if you watch my previous video, I've explained why I chose Google Collab over other platforms. But in case you're not using Google Collab and opted for either Jupyter Notebook or any other softwares that are available out there, please make sure that you install the latest version of Python before you continue. The version that we'll be using is version three or anything above. Now, since I'm using Google Collab, I don't have to worry about the version because it's already on the latest version of Python. Now, for those of you who will be using Google Collab and will be following exactly with me, let me explain the Google Collab interface a little bit. So once you come into this link, which will be in the description, which is collab.research.google.com and log in with your Gmail ID, you will see a page similar to this one. Now, Google keeps on changing the interface a little bit, but there would not be any drastic difference from what you see. Right at the top, if you see, we have a couple of tabs. Uh, in the file tab, we have an option called New Notebook, Open Notebook, Upload Notebook, and Save a Copy and Drive, and other options, right? Now, the reason it's referring to a notebook is because when we start writing our codes, the page on which we are writing or the file that we are writing are codes in Google Collab or Jupyter Notebook is called a notebook. And the benefit of using Google Collab is since this is on Google Cloud service, the moment you start creating a notebook, it gets automatically saved on your Google Drive. Now I can right away start writing my code by clicking on this plus code button here. But to be more organized, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this file and click on new notebook, which creates a new notebook for me. And as you see, it's opened up a new tab. And in this new tab at the top, it's giving me the file name. So right now it's a default name, which is untitled 0.ipynb. Now this is the extension that it gives for a notebook file. Okay. So I can rename this to, let's say part one and press enter. So this file is automatically saved onto my Google drive. Now, if you see, I've opened up my Google Drive on another tab here and the file that we just saved there has been automatically saved in my Google Drive under the folder Collab Notebooks. Now, coming back to the notebook itself, again, at the top, we have file where we have a couple of options and it's self-explanatory, so I would not be going through each one of them. Then you have an edit tab. It has a couple of options and the first one says undo and redo, which is obviously not activated right now because we have not written anything. And then we have select all cells. Now every line of code or every input text box that we see here, like this one is called a cell in a notebook file. Okay. So this is referring to that cell itself and we can select all cells. We can cut cells. We can copy cells and paste and all those things. Then we have view tab to show certain properties and certain windows within this notebook file, which enables us to use certain features within Google Collab. And we'll get into those in future videos. Okay. And then we have insert so that we can insert a new line of code cell. By the way, this code cell can be inserted by clicking on this plus icon here. So when I click here, another code cell has been inserted in the notebook file. Then we have the runtime tab, which takes care of the execution of the code that we have already written. There are multiple options here. Finally, we have the tools section, which has a couple of settings related to notebook. We will not be getting into this as of now, but in case required, I'll explain this as well. Now coming back to the main interface here, as I said, we can click on this code button here to insert a new line of code. And I'm going to show you certain shortcuts as well that you can use while writing your Python codes. So let's begin our first lesson into Python basics. The first thing that we need to do 
or we need to understand in python are variables okay and how can we assign certain values to a variable now let's say you want to assign a value 10 to a variable x so all you have to do is write x is equal to 10 and then you can either press control enter to execute this line or you can press this play button here to run that line of code or else if you want to run the code and insert a new line of code simultaneously then you press shift plus enter okay so i'm going to do shift plus enter here and if you see the code is running here now this has assigned the value of 10 to my variable x now if i write a print command and ask python to print the value of x here and press shift and enter it will show me the value 10 okay and by the way if i just enter x and press shift and enter it will still show me the value of 10. now what if i write x in capital letter the reason python is giving an error while i wrote a capital x is because python is case sensitive now let's say you want to assign multiple values to multiple variables simultaneously so all you have to do is separate your variable names with a comma and then assign the value i've now executed a code and it has assigned the value so if i want to check the value of any of those variables i'm going to just enter the variable name here and if you see it has assigned the value correctly however while assigning values to a variable you need to be sure that the number of values that you're entering are equal to the number of variables that you are assigning it to okay so basically you cannot do it like this that you have xyz here and only two values here this will give me an error okay so be cautious of that now that you understood variables let's talk about types of data now in python there are many types of data but we're gonna start with the most basic ones starting off with numbers let's say i assign a value to a variable x which is 8 now 8 we know is an integer but how do we check that in python to check a type of data within python you write type and the variable name and as expected it's showing me x is an int now have you noticed one thing i've assigned 8 to x and i have kept on assigning values to variable x on multiple occasions here that is because every time you assign a value to a variable which was already declared and assigned earlier it will reassign that value to the variable okay so anything which was assigned before this step has been automatically removed now let's look at another type of number data type which is known as float okay so i'm gonna assign a value to y and i'm gonna say 5.54 now if i check the type of this variable it's gonna give me float the second data type in python is string and strings and numbers are really important to understand because you will frequently use both of them together and in isolation to generate certain outputs or show a certain kind of results to the audience so this is how a string looks like so i'm going to assign a value to the variable z and i'm going to say z is equal to abc okay and if you notice i entered abc within double quotes and i'm going to run this now if i request the value for z by entering like this it's going to give me the value of z within single quotes here okay however if i write it like this print z then it's going to give me just the value so this is the difference while writing print statement and a normal variable name especially in the case of strings in numbers it does not matter now i have assigned a value to z now i want to club another string with the value of z so how do we combine two strings together the way to do that is using a plus sign so i'm going to say print z plus in double quotes i'm going to say xyz and i'm going to run this code and it has given me abc xyz but what if i want a space between abc and xyz so all you can do is just enter a space here and run the code again and it will give you that space now please note if i try to club a integer value with a string it will give me an error because you cannot club different data types together 
okay so let me show you what i mean i'm going to print 5 and i'm going to add that with the value of z if you see it has given me an error so the way to club both of them together is to first convert your integer into a string and how do we do that i'm going to write the same code print but instead of just 5 i'm going to write a keyword which is called str which is a function within python to convert any value into a string and place the value that i have within the parameter of that particular function and then i'm going to use the same line of code that i used before and complete my line of code now if you see it has clubbed both my integer value and the string together now the last thing that we're going to cover today is arithmetic operations as you know we have some basic arithmetic operations like addition subtraction and division but we're going to also look at exponents modulus and floor division okay so let's see each one of them one by one the first one is the basic one which is addition and as you guessed it it's same as we do in normal maths which is let's say i want to add 4 plus 9 and that's exactly how you write it in python so it will give me the result in the output window which is 13 the subtraction is similar let's say i want to say 8 minus 3 and it will give me the output third one is division so let's say 12 divided by 4 you use a forward slash for division the fourth operation is finding the power or exponent of something so let's say 2 to the power of 5 i would have to write it like this two double stars and then 5 next one is modulus let's say i want to identify the modulus of 16 by 5 so i'm going to say 16 person sign and then 5 and it's going to give me 1 and the last thing that I want to cover is called floor division. So let me show you one example. If I simply divide 16 by 5 here, it's going to give me 3.2, which is a float number. What if I want to have the number rounded down to the nearest integer? I will use a floor division. So I'm going to write 16, double forward slash and 5. This is going to give me 3 flooring down to the nearest integer. So I hope you understood the basic structure of variables, data types, and arithmetic operations in Python. Now we're going to cover a lot more in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. And if you're enjoying watching this series, then please consider subscribing to the channel. That will really help me out. And hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload new content. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.